Hello everyone, back to today's video. Really, really late with today's video. I had uh, a lot of problems uh, today due to the snow. We lost the internet connection uh, at Gaswell Towers. So, um, didn't get on till around, uh, didn't get put back on the internet till around uh, sort of three o'clock time. Um, so I had to update the uh, summary on my own page and then get everything together for the video. So the upshot of it all is that at, at 10 to 5 in the afternoon, I've just got round to starting to record today's uh, video update. So we're going to have a look at when the next week's 10 days for today's video update. It takes us through the first week of uh, January. It looks like we can have very unsettled weather coming up and there will be some more cold weather to come i think through the course of um next week so it's cold at the mo moment we've lost the snow now but we are going to have more problems with ice it's going to turn a bit milder over the new year weekend but next week i think you start to shift that jet stream back southwards again so uh, we may get another dose of snow uh in the second half of next week it's a little way off and it is subject to change but uh i think the signs are there that we're going to have it quite cold and unsettled through this opening part of january no signs still yet of a significant sustained blocking feature locking us in to a prolonged cold pattern so it looks like we're going to keep this sort of on off um cold to mild uh, type weather going into the um, first week, 10 days of January. No sign of a pronounced blocking feature setting up at this stage, but um, maybe that will come later on into the winter. We'll have to wait and see on that. So, better get on with it. We're uh, very late, as I say. We're going to start off just looking at radar picture. So, these echoes just here off the southeastern coast, heading to northern parts of France. That's the last of last night's rain and uh, snow. Then we've got these wintry showers across Scotland and wintry showers running down the coastal fringes as well. Let's have a look at precipitation type. So you can see that particularly out here across uh, the Irish Sea down into Wales, we've got pink colours showing up indicating those are snow showers. I think many of these showers really are snow showers if we add over the temperature overlay you can see that uh well we're still a degree or two above uh, freezing at the moment through most parts of the country but i think those temperatures will be heading down rapidly now it's starting to go dark and our problem tonight is going to be ice uh because we had a lot of rain and snow of course especially across uh england and wales so i think the problem is that it's all going to freeze up tonight uh towns and cities going down to minus two minus three and in the countryside, particularly where we've got snow cover on the ground, we could see those temperatures in the north going down to minus 10. That's just 14 Fahrenheit for severe frost to come tonight. And as I say, I think uh, ice is going to be the main problem both tonight and tomorrow morning. Do take care if you're off out and about uh, uh, driving or walking tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, things will start to ease. Uh, it's going to be another cold day tomorrow, and then things start to ease as going to Friday. But it may produce another spell of snow, actually. So this is the precipitation type forecast from the Weather Outlook for Friday. Uh, starting off at midnight, it's mostly dry at that point. will still be frosty. By 6 o'clock in the morning, the next weather system's heading in. And you see it is turning to snow here across uh, northwest Scotland and southwest Scotland and down into uh, northern England as well. Further southwest of that, through Wales and southwest England, just looking at rain. Uh, and then through the morning, this is 9 o'clock in the morning, indicating quite a snow event going on here across southern parts of Scotland and northern England. So the snow risk... Probably going to be a bit further northwards on Friday. Um, and there could be some very significant snow there as well. Further south, a lot of very wet to have a really heavy rain for the bulk of England and Wales through Friday morning. Um, and the snow continues across Scotland and northern, uh, and northern England, actually, uh, up to midday. So um, not a transition back to uh, rain, as you might expect, with a system coming in from off the Atlantic through Friday morning. So that does suggest quite a snow event there parts of Scotland and Northern England. A little bit of snow turning up again over the Welsh mountains as well, you'll notice. And then through the course of Friday afternoon, the rain clears away across England and Wales, but we still have some snow through parts of Scotland and uh, Northern England as well. So that needs keeping an eye on. I haven't got time to update Snow Watch uh, tonight, but I'll probably do it um, tomorrow if that's still showing 
that kind of snow situation for the north uh, of the country on Friday. Once that gets out of the way, then we do go into a genuinely much milder scenario. So that's the situation on Saturday, for example, with snow really being restricted to the Scottish mountains. Most parts of the country then just having outbreaks of rain and these unsettled and quite wet conditions at times continue into New Year's Eve as well. Uh, Central in temperature, just to bring you up to date with that. So uh, provisional up to yesterday, up to Boxing Day, the CT is standing at 5.2 degrees, which is an anomaly of just 0.4 of a degree above average. Maybe a little bit surprisingly, but we did have a, it's above average, but we did have a very mild few days um, just running up towards and hitting uh, Christmas Day, and of course it got colder since then. I suspect that's going to tick down a bit over the next two or three days. We are in for a couple of really quite cold days, and with frosty nights too, that's bound to lower. I, as I said a few days ago, I don't think we're going to get a big deviation with the uh, CT this um, month. We may finish up a little bit on the plus side. We may f even finish up a little bit on the negative side. I'm not sure where we'll finish up. We might even finish up bang on average. But either way, we're not going to have a big deviation uh, this month. So I think we'll basically say we're coming out with uh, average sort of temperatures uh, this December. Uh, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts for the next for, well, uh, 500 millibar height anomaly flow chart for the next uh, weeks, 10 days. I say chart because we are still without the ECMWF. Look, that's just a blank space there. Not sure what's happening at Penn State University, why it's not updating. But we have got the GFS. This is how the GFS uh, 500 millibar height anomaly flow chart is looking for the next week, 10 days, taking us to around the 7th of January. Uh, but let's extrapolate to low pressure, of course. We've got a deep trough of low pressure around the UK, um, very deep trough into east parts of America as well. So the big freeze will continue there through many central and eastern regions. A strong jet stream coming across the Atlantic doing something like that, but placing us on the cold side of the jet stream, you'll notice. So as I said at the beginning of the video, it looks like it's going to stay and settle through its opening week of January. But at times that jet stream will still be tracking to our south. will still be on the cold side of the jet. Which means at times we will entrench colder air from the north into this trough of low pressure. So expect continuing alternating air masses. Sometimes milder, sometimes colder. And at times cold enough for snow as well through the course of the opening week of January particularly, but not exclusively in the north. Uh, this is the GFS temperature and precipitation ensemble chart for the next couple of weeks. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average, cold and average at the moment, of course. We're going to go a little bit milder than average over the New Year period. So this is sort of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day just there. After that, so through this first week of January, if anything, we've got a little bit of a cooling trend You'll notice most of these coloured lines are going below underneath the red line underneath the 30-year temperature average. So it looks like temperatures will be cooling or even turning colder through this opening week of January. That's the 7th of January, day 10, for example, uh, just there. So cool and unsettled really sums it up. Lots and lots of precipitation spikes to come as well. This is today's dose of rain and snow, of course, or last night and today's dose of rain and snow. And uh, we just see from the ensemble, and as we go through, there's lots of precipitation spikes coming up. I suppose the second week of January, this period here, might have a little bit of a drying drain compared to this period, but overall it looks very unsettled, certainly for the next week to uh, 10 days. Temperature anomalies for the next week are looking like this. So uh, this takes from the uh, 27th of December to the 4th of January. So most parts of Europe are coming out very substantially milder than average. And the biggest deviation has been all month, all through December, continues to be over in the east and the southeast of Europe. And there, into Western Russia, there we've got uh, temperature anomalies between 6 and 10 degrees above average. Now, for the UK and Ireland, we're not all that far from average, but you can see, but just about for the UK and Ireland, we are the coolest 
places to average in Europe and also for parts of Norway as well. And the coldest place in Europe to average is across Iceland. It is genuinely cold and average there. For the UK and I, we're a little bit um, milder than average for England and Wales, a little bit cooler than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. But out of most of Europe, actually, we are one of the coolest places compared to uh, average. So um, all those winters we've had recently where all the cold weather have been plunging down into the southeast of Europe, um, it's not the case uh, this winter we continue to be, although not desperately cold, we continue to be one of the cooler places. Also unsettled, so from the 27th of December to the 4th of January, the precipitation anomaly is coming out average to wetter than average, not just for the UK, but for many sort of northern, western and central parts of Europe as well. This is indicative of the jet stream being on a little bit more of a southerly track. Now, look at that. That is the temperature anomaly in America uh, for the next week. This goes from the 27th of December to the 4th of January. Actually quite warm out in the western states. So there we've got temperature anomalies significantly warmer than average. But really through these um, central and eastern states, uh, it is brutally cold. That's brutal cold that we see there with, I think these are Fahrenheit, uh, some places having uh, temperature anomalies for the next week going down to 20 Fahrenheit uh, below average so and it's a cold time of year anyway for northern america so that really is brutal cold that we see there for many parts of america it's been a long time since we've seen that sort of extent of cold into particularly northern and western uh, europe but it just goes to show you if it can happen in america it can happen anyway you just need to get the right setup to entrench the cold air out of the Arctic. And sooner or later, we will see that kind of brutal cold um, getting into Europe. It may not be this winter, but at some point, we will see those sort of brutal cold uh, conditions into Europe again. Uh, this is how the, temp the precipitation anom anomaly looks for America for uh, the next week, 27th of December to the 4th of January. And generally, it's a uh, drier than average week coming up. But of course, that is often the case when you have it very, very cold, such as we see there. Uh, that's how the um, ensemble looks for Chicago, just to put this in perspective. So again, it's the same idea as the UK, that upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble, the red line is a 30 upper air temperature average. And at the moment, Chicago is down there. Their upper air temperatures are somewhere between minus 20 and minus 25 degrees Celsius. Now, when we had the big freeze in uh, January 1987 uh, in the UK, uh, our upper air temperatures went down very close to minus 20 at 850 HPA. They're colder than that in uh, Chicago. So this really is brutal cold that we've got here in Northern America. And we're going to keep it exceptionally cold really uh, into the start of January, into the first week of January. But then the second week of January, this period here, is highlighting a bit of a recovery in the temperature uh, in Chicago, going milder than average as well. And also on the New York ensemble, we see this as well. So starting off again with brutal cold on the eastern coast of America. But by the second week of January, this period just here, going milder than average. So this is telling us that for the second week of January, we are likely to see this very brutally cold pattern relaxing its grip a little bit in North America. That might be the start of a change in terms of the overall northern hemispheric pattern. We'll have to wait and see on that. If it is, it might be that the conditions in uh, the UK and Europe also start to change through the second week of January as well. But certainly for the next week to 10 days, more brutal cold coming up for America. Just have a look at the uh, GFS. And this is just updated. This is a midday run of the GFS. It's our New Year's Eve. It's looking wet and windy, essentially. We've got tightly packed ice bars here, indicating the risk of gale force winds on New Year's Eve and probably quite a lot of heavy rain. This is New Year's Day. Uh, again, another area of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. This time, the gale force winds possibly focus on England and Wales. So it looks like being quite a stormy New Year. That could have weather impacts. I don't think there'll be much snow around away from northern Scotland, but... Uh, we may have more weather impacts from wind and rain. And as I say, that does look quite stormy there 
uh, on New Year's Day for England and Wales. Uh, 2nd of January brings a new area of low pressure in both the Atlantic, so very unsettled weather continues. A little bit milder with that one. The air is coming up slightly more uh, from the southwest. But then by Wednesday the 3rd, a week away, we're beginning to pull winds back into the northwest again. The black line here is the jet stream. You can see that it's starting to sink uh, to the south of the UK. So if you're on the northern side of the jet, as we are here, we're just there. If you're on the northern side of the jet, you're on the cold side of the jet stream. So from the middle of next week onwards, it looks like the jet stream begins to sink back southwards again. And we start to pull in some colder air. So this is uh, Thursday before the January with the next area of low pressure moving in. And that's coming into that colder air. So uh, as that tracks across the country on the northern side of this low pressure, very similar to what's happened uh, last night and today, on the northern side of this low pressure, we may pull in uh, cold enough air to turn the precipitation wintry uh, once again. And it's all caused by the fact that the jet stream is to our south. The jet stream is down there. We're on the cold side of the jet, so we can start entrenching colder air onto particularly the northern and western side of these areas of low pressure. And as the low pressures clear through, we start to pull uh, the cold air down across the whole of the country. So that might be another snow situation in the second half of uh, next week. This is how things look on, uh, when, on Friday the 5th of uh, January, looking quite cold and still very unsettled as well. And then we bring through another area of low pressure. So this uh, system just here is a developing area of low pressure on Friday the 5th of January. By Saturday the 6th, that low pressure, again, is clearing away to the east. And you'll notice cold air is continuing to be pulled down from the north. So again, that could be another dose of snow sometime around the 5th or the 6th of January. Anywhere that's on the northern side of that uh, low pressure will be at risk of getting some snow. And then a little bit beyond uh, day 10, we find high pressure trying to build over Scandinavia as low pressure starts to race in from off the Atlantic. That's trying to bring mild air back in across the country, but that high pressure is having a go at uh, turning winds into the east, what happens there. So let's just run you through the rest of this midday run uh, of the uh, GFS. And uh, I'll just quickly show you what happens. So eventually it looks like we're getting to more and more of a block situation as we go through this first uh, week of January. So that's how we finish up this midday run of the GFS, which is Friday the 12th of January. Quite a big area of high pressure in over Scandinavia, although we're still actually quite unsettled and reasonably mild at this point with these areas of low pressure. This high pressure might have a better chance of establishing itself over Scandinavia, however, through this second week of January, as we know the pattern is beginning to change in America. So the long wave pattern could be shifting a bit as we go into the middle part of January. Anyway, as the brutal cold relaxes from the north of America, we might start to see high pressure building over Scandinavia. We'll be keeping an eye on that, of course. Finally, the east the US, so uh, looking very unsettled over the new year. It's going to be quite a wet and windy New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I would have thought this is how things look up to the middle of next week. Still looking pretty unsettled and wet and windy as well. And then it's the second half of next week. So, uh, again, it's very similar to what the GFS is doing. We start to uh, push the jet stream to our south. There's the black line starting to plunge down there. So we go onto the cold side of the jet and we start to entrench colder air into these areas of low pressure. So through the second half of next week, if that jet stream does shift to our south, we may well start to uh, pull colder air into the low pressures. And after a mild start to next week, a reasonably mild start next week, the second half next week might turn colder and may have an increased risk of snow once again. Right, so that's it. That's brought you up to date uh, with everything. Sorry for the delay on today's video. The uh, weatherman was uh, laid low by the weather uh, today, but we're all back on track. And uh, we'll be bringing you the updates, of course, tomorrow. Um, no five-day forecast, by the way. He's waiting for that. I had to cancel it. Hang up time. Fit everything. And I wanted to bring you up to date with the week's 10-day uh, situation because we haven't spoken about it since before uh, Christmas. So, um, five-day forecast. We'll be back, as usual, uh, weather permitting, next Wednesday. That's all for now, then. Thanks for watching.